Hi there, how are you doing today? I'm great, Andrew. Thank you for asking. That's great to hear. So uh, if you could just quickly introduce yourself for us, give us your name, uh, your title, a short bio about yourself, your credentials, and then uh, please state the name of the article you'll be talking about today. Um, so my name is Dr. Risa Mauricio, and I am an assistant professor of the University of Texas um, Health Houston Sussex School of Nursing. I am a um, pediatric nurse practitioner um, in the intensive care unit. So I have been in the intensive care unit as an advanced practice provider for almost 30 years. And I also am a member of the Philippine Nurses Association of America. I am currently one of the board members of PNAA. That's what we call our organization. And um, I chair the committee that's called um, Practice um, Committee that has something to do with the clinical practices of nurses that are members of the Philippine Nurses Association of America and the director of the emotional wellness program that we call the Kabalika. And the, um, so a group of us wrote an article called Emotional Health of Filipino American Nurses um, during COVID-19 pandemic. Fantastic. Well, I was just wondering if you could briefly give us an overview about this article and why nurses should read it. Yes, so um, this article, when we did this project, it was during the height of COVID-19. So we started our survey with the Filipino American nurses that are members of the organization um, at the height of COVID around November of um, 2021. And um, so what we were trying to do is um, really seek us um, a lot of us nurses that are Filipinos are in the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we wanted to know how their emotions were during that time and how they are coping amidst this horrible pandemic that all of us were just um, unhinged of what to do. Um, so although now that, you know, that terrible phase of the pandemic has passed and we know how to cope, yet we still have new normal, um, there are really things that I think we can fall back and look back of what we have done as nurses in general and Filipino American nurses in particular. Um, you probably have heard and a lot of our viewers have also heard that unfortunately a lot of the Filipino American nurses died during the pandemic and they were disproportionately affected compared to all other cultures um, of the uh, nurses in the nation. And one of that is perhaps because a lot of us Filipino American nurses work in the acute care or critical care. So really at the front line where there are a lot of um, sick, sick patients that um, we, are, we were taking care of. Um, so during that time, we wanted to find out the emotions of our nurses that um, surrounded this, how they are coping at the same time going to work with all the uncertainties starting from what type of, you know, um, PPEs are they going to use? So PPE is your personal protective equipment, right? Starting just from the very get go of doing that. And also on the other, um, the other part of that spectrum that really the terrible things that a lot of our, of the patients' families are not able to come to the bedside because, um, because of the communicability of the disease and um, we want to contain the infection as well. So lots of horrible things that were happening that's why we wanted to find out what are the nurses feeling and their emotions during that time and how they are coping. So basically it was a survey and I want our nurses to know that um, it doesn't mean that because we all are nur all nurses we all feel the same. If you compare the survey from the American Nurses um, Association Foundation, um, the result of that sur survey is totally different from what we found out from our, our own Philippine American nurses. The nurses that were surveyed by a ANA said that, um, of course, you know, there were different respondents, different ethnicities, and mostly they were white. And we are particularly mostly on Filipino Americans, but. Um, the result of their survey says that a um, majority of the nurses 
identify themselves as um, overwhelmed of the situation. Whereas our nurses, on the other hand, when we surveyed and the questions were almost similar, um, they said that they are resilient. And so, but it doesn't mean that they are resilient. They are able to cope with everything because um, on the other hand, they feel that they are resilient and they're confident that they can handle things. On another hand, they're also very worried of what's gonna happen to themselves and to their families um, with this pandemic. So I think that's really one of the big thing that I wanna um, capture when nurses read this and to make sure that there are cultural differences and how we feel, um, especially during this pandemic and situations that we are in when we are challenged. Well, you brought up a lot of important topics there and it, it seems like such a, an important issue I know that you were just talking about why nurses should read it, but was there a specific reason or a moment where you decided that this should be an article that I wrote? And if there was, what would that moment be? So, um, as nurses, I mean, I work in the intensive care. I know what's happening and I know how nurses feel at the bedside. You know, a lot of us are feeling burnt out, moral distress is there, anxious, depressed. And so just by bringing this um, result at the forefront, people would know, like, how can we help each other? I think fundamentally, you know, as human beings, especially as nurses, we're very compassionate. And understanding one another is very important so we can help one another. But how do we understand one another, to me, comes from knowing who you are, who the person next to me, who is my leader, who, how will I approach them? So that I think understanding different cultures and ethnicities that affect how we behave verbally and non-verbally at the bedside is really very important. That we cannot just, um, you know, say, apply it to everybody. If we think that so-and-so, you know, is feeling this way, and that means also the, the person beside that person feels the same way. We should not generalize um, feelings of people to everyone because we are all individual we have our own feelings individual from one another we react to situations individually from each other such that um, having this article out there I think is very important because then it hones in to the um, the values of our culture as Filipinos which you know rarely you can find in any other publications as you probably have noticed and have seen that when we talk about um, ethnicity and culture, Filipinos are usually lumped under Asians, but Asians do not look the same, do not feel the same, you know, behave the same. We are different as individuals. We should be treated individually as a person and respected individually as a person. Well, that's fantastic, and that's uh, that's some strong statements there. Uh, if if there are just maybe like two or three things specifically in this article that you want a nurse to take away from it, what what would those be? Yes, yeah, so I think it is important not not only so the difference. I want them to know, although the the result of ANA survey is not in the article, but I but I mentioned it, and just to hone in the difference of how Filipino American nurses emotion um, compared to other cultures. That's number one. Number two, that when you are dealing with individual cultures and say we talk about Filipinos who is, they're working beside you, you know, make sure you understand who that person is. Because as a Filipino, I have to say that it's part of our culture when talking about mental health, you just don't tell everyone about it. That, hey, I'm depressed or I'm, I'm anxious, right? Um, and sometimes, there are even times that you will never know if that person feels depressed or anxious. So I think it goes back to what I said earlier that make sure that you know that person is. And knowing that person doesn't mean just a hi and a hello, right? Um, talking to that person and understanding, so the more you talk to an individual, the more you know of who that individual is, and the more you understand on how are you going to help one another. Um, at the bedside right now, um, there's a lot of you know staffing issues and you 
we all know about it. The staffing, nursing staffing is a big issue in the country. So that at the bedside, I think it's easier when you are helping one another. And that help comes from understanding who that person is beside you. And um, so that's the other thing that I would also ask the nurses to hone in when they look at the article, because they can see the difference. And if you are a leader, don't just assume that, you know, all your, your staff would, be, would feel the same without knowing and understanding who they are, because there's going to be a lot of cultural differences. And if you have a staff nurse that's a Filipino-American, make sure that um, you know the culture of the individual such that you can provide a safe environment for the person to talk to you about you know, how they feel and what are their challenges are. And then you, the, your ability as well of developing you know, a culturally sensitive approach when you want to help her or him or you know, that, that group of individuals, right? Talking about Filipino Americans. Those are some very important topics that you honed in on there. And, and we thank you again for writing this article for us. We really appreciate the time that not just you, but everyone else who contributed put into it. We, we are very appreciative of it and we thank you. Yeah, and I also thank my co-authors of this article because, you know, we poured a lot of um, man hours just during the survey and analyzing it. And for the um, American Nurse Journal for the opportunity for us to have this put out so that our colleagues out there can see who we are and how we can help us and help one another. Well, thank you again for sitting down and talking to us about it today. It was, it was great to speak to you and uh, hear the, the wonderful things that you had to, to say. So thank you again. Thanks as well. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye.